I take very great delight in welcoming every one of us. us. And as is usual with us, we take some time out to sing songs of praise unto God, songs of adoration.
It is now time to pray, to prepare our hearts to receive the word. Remember very well that in the parable of the sower of the seed, the Lord said, the heart is the ground where the seed of the word of God is sown. Right now, open your mouth and heart to the Lord in prayer, preparing your heart soil to receive the seed of the word. Pray to the Lord right away. Do not close your mouth wherever you are found. It's all over the world you are expected to be praying now in order to be a full beneficiary of what the Lord has packaged. He wants to hear you praying. Eternal Father in glory, we want to bless your name because of your goodness and mercy. Thank you because of this period that we find ourselves in. Thank you for all of them that are stationed everywhere in the nations of the world to listen to the word of the Lord from on high, from the depths of the heart of the Lord. Revelation knowledge. Thank you for your faithfulness, great Father in heaven, blessed Redeemer. It shall be said that we went into the presence of the Lord and we came out refurbished. We came out reconfigured. We came out reformatted. We came out replenished. We came out reformed. He that created has the ability to recreate. He that created has the ability to reformat. He that created has the ability to reform and to refurbish. My Father and my God, thank you because of what you've designed to do. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for what is going for us. Uh, blood of the land that speaks better faith than that of Eber. Glory be to your holy name forever and ever. Holy Spirit divine. Remember that the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord, said in his day, My doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. Precious Father, and I want to say that my doctrine shall not be mine, but it shall be he that sent me. My mind is lost into your mind. Grandfather in heaven, my will is lost into your will. My intellect is lost into your intellect. And that is what must happen. And the men of this generation will see it. They will benefit from it. And they will shout praise unto the Lord. Thank you, my Father, my God, because I know that you have answered. Glory and honor and praise and power be unto the Lord our God forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And let the church everywhere say, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Now, open your heart soil, that you might receive the seed of the word. For if you do so, then you will be not the better, but the best for so doing. We have come to another meeting, and the theme is what a retreat is all about. In Christian parlance, a retreat is a solemn forum arranged to facilitate the following activities, among other things. People who are outside the kingdom of God are brought inside. In other words, the people that are hitherto unsaved or unregenerated are brought to experience salvation, regeneration, which is through repentance from dead works and faith in the work of Christ at the cross of Calvary. We have this information in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 
8 and 9. Salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, had he quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. So those that are unsaved get prepared to be saved. Unregenerated get prepared to be regenerated. For that is why... The forum has been arranged, apart from other things that we are going to hear. Now, forums like these are arranged also to restore the backsliding man, the one that has strayed from the Lord. It is also for the recovering of the strange sheep. The Lord Jesus Christ talked about somebody having 100 sheep, and that in Luke chapter 15, one strays away and he goes all out looking for the one that has strayed away. But while going out to look for that one, he has his mind and heart on the ones that did not stray. So get ready to be recovered if you are a straying sheep. It is a time for strengthening the feeble mind and the wobbling feet. It is a time for moving those that are only near the kingdom into the kingdom proper. There are people that come to church and they are always near the kingdom. And what does that mean? Every now and again, they're hearing the word of God and they say these things are fantastic. They hallow the thing they're hearing. They can say many, many things in favor of the Bible, in favor of the messages. But they have not yet given their life to Christ Jesus. They have not yet relinquished everything, their sins, and become children of God. They are not far from the kingdom of God because they understand and they appreciate the things about the kingdom. But they have not entered proper. There is not any evidence of having entered proper. Now, it is also a time of reflecting, reassessing, and determining one's state and standing before the Lord. Reflecting, reassessing, and determining one's state and standing before the Lord. You have to take note of the things that I am listing. It is a time of invigorating the tired soldier or the tired prophet back into business. You know the man called the prophet Elijah. At a point in time, he was tired, discouraged, and was about to throw in the towel to cut short his ministry and even wish for himself that he should die until the Lord sent an angel and intervened and invigorated him for the last lap of his ministry. A retreat is a solemn period also for expunging the unchristian attitudes, conducts, or characteristics that have clung to the Christian or strayed in lately. Then it's also a time of building back those Christian attributes that have strayed out as a result of the circumstances that you have been into lately. It's also a time of seeking better heights of Christian virtues, heights of fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. This particular retreat is not going to disappoint in delivering all that God has packaged. So this retreat will have that done. It is sealed. 
It has been programmed. It has been promised. And guess what? Once God has programmed a thing, once God has designed a thing on his drawing board, he goes all out. He sets the eye on what he has designed to execute it. He will watch over his word to perform it. That's what he told the young prophet Jeremiah when he called him. Having our eyes of understanding opened, what the retreat is all about is a must. But you need to know what this means, really. It means as follows. We experiencing some definite conviction, some definite knowing, some definite insight, some definite perception, some definite realization deep inside our hearts or minds concerning what the Bible says concerning God, concerning the promises of God, the infallibility of his word. I said that again, having our eyes of understanding opened, having definite perception in the mind, definite conviction in the mind, definite insight in the mind, deep inside the mind, Concerning all that God has packaged, all the goodies, all the privileges, and all that the Christian person is expected to enjoy. Now, take note of this. When there is no eye of understanding opened, people suffer some loss, great loss for that matter. They get into some misery. For the time being, have your mind fixed on this point, that we have come together, that the Lord may open the eyes of our understanding, every one of us, so that we can see as we ought to see. See the Bible in the proper perspective, the way the angels see the Bible, the way the saints see the Bible, the way Jesus Christ sees the Bible, the way the Holy Spirit sees the Bible, see God in the perspective that Jesus Christ saw God while he was a human being here on earth. He said, I know him. He said, no one had gone to heaven and had come back to tell us definitely about God. But he that was or is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. While he was on earth, he was in the bosom of the Father. Consider some child that is being carried in the bosom of a mother. Now, that is what Jesus Christ said when he was on earth, even in his human form. He said he was in the bosom of the Father. He knew him. He knew of his uh, infallibility. He knew of his power. He knew how that he would answer his prayer. And so when he was praying, he wasn't uh, uh, shouting. He wasn't uh, making noise per se. He was saying, thank you, Father, because I know that you have answered me already. Now, I am following up uh, this uh, explanation, biblical uh, personages. And when we will have added these experiences and these cases, then you will have understood what we are talking properly. Let me run your mind through the Bible. Let's go to Genesis chapter 14. We are talking about having our eyes of understanding open. Genesis chapter 14. I am reading there from verse 14. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. 
and he divided himself against them. He and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Now, verse 17 downwards talks about uh, the encounter with Melchizedek, even that uh, type of Christ. And now after the encounter with Melchizedek, now look at what is recorded. Now in verse 21, And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe lashet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have met Abram rich. How come that Abram uh, knew that he was rich by God? It was his eyes of understanding having been opened. He knew that his riches were from God. He knew that his escapades were from God. He knew that all he had were from God. And so the credit must go to God and not to this man. He was not going to take anything, just anything, that was recovered from the armies that uh, uh, attacked uh, whom he had pursued. That is what we mean. Somebody knowing assuredly uh, deep inside the heart something that other people find difficult to know. Abraham knew that God was the one that enriched him on all things. I want to show some other person that uh, has this, his eyes of understanding been enlightened? And let's go to Esther chapter 4. I am reading from verse 13. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thine self, thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another quarter. How did he know that the deliverance and enlargement will arise to the Jews from another quarter? If Esther would refuse to do the needful, how did he know that? How was he convinced about that? His eyes of understanding were opened as to the ability of God to bring salvation another way if this person refused to take advantage of the position into which the Lord had put her. So the eyes of understanding of Mordecai was opened unto God's ability and he was very sure about that. And then after that he had said that, then Esther acted. And then the action brought deliverance of the Jews. Want to show another person that had his eyes of understanding opened. And then he made statements that showed that he was on a higher plane, on a higher ground. In 2 Kings chapter 2. And then... Reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a wild wind. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elijah said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Here you are. And then a servant 
of this prophet, a trainee prophet, came to realize that his master was about to be taken. It was not the master that told him that. He knew it by some revelation knowledge. The Spirit of God had made him to know it. His eyes of understanding were opened. He had awareness. He had insight. And he knew what was going to happen. And then he would not miss the chance that he would have when he saw the thing happen. And now he would not accept any discouragement. Now, and verse 3, And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that thy Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And then, on and on, the test continued. From this position to the other position. From this place to the other place. And then he would not succumb until the appropriate time. And the appropriate time, as we have in verse 9 says, And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. How can somebody make such a request if his eyes of understanding are not opened as to the possibility that was awaiting him? If you don't have awareness that somebody is rich, how can you go to him asking help? If you do not know about the philanthropic mind of an individual, how can you go and ask scholarship at the hand of the person? If you do not know how good a doctor is, how can you go to the clinic of the doctor? So this man, by inspiration, by insight, he knew what was in his master, and he persisted. And then, verse 10 says, And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Do you know what he was saying? He was calling Elijah his father and his father. And then he said he was the chariot of Israel. Listen to me. Israel had an army and the army had chariots. And now... But this man was now saying that those chariots are Elijah. Those chariots were Elijah. Which means that without Elijah speaking, without Elijah's insight, without Elijah's empowerment, those chariots of those soldiers were going to do nothing. Elijah was an embodiment of the chariots of the armies of Israel. And then the horsemen thereof, people that were moving on horses and with spares, going to war, all the swift people. He said all those of them were, and Elijah was an embodiment of all them. How could somebody say all that without having his eyes of understanding opened concerning the person that he was talking about? There you are. This is what we are talking about. Having eyes of understanding opened. I show you another example in the New Testament. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. Matthew, chapter 16. We are reading from verse 13. Matthew 
16 and 13. Then when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, saying, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, By whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The Christ means the anointed. The Christ means the one that was being awaited. The Christ means the Messiah, whom the prophets talked about. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Remember that this is the problem the Pharisees and the Sadducees have. The problem of the elders of the Jews, even the religious elders, they wouldn't accept that he was the son of God. They wouldn't accept that he came from heaven. But now here was a man that knew that he came from heaven, that knew that this was the Messiah that was predicted, that was to come by the prophet, that knew that this was that very son of God. Now, that is what we call eyes of understanding being opened. He was full of insight. He was full of awareness. And then as a result, look at what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, happy art thou, fortunate art thou, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. My Father in heaven by his Spirit has revealed it unto thee. The Gospel according to St. Luke from verse uh, 24, and Pilate gave sentence that he should be as the required. And he released unto them him that for sedition a mother was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they led hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they led the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Verse 32. And there were also two other malefactors, in other words, criminals, led with him to be, to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors. They nailed them to the cross, one on the one side, the other on the other side or one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they knew not what they do. And they parted his remnants and cast laws. Verse 36. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, serve thyself. Now verse 39, and one of the malefactors which were hanged, read on him, rebuked him, scolded him, charged at him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. You claim to be Messiah. You claim to be Savior. Now it is time to prove it. Save yourself and us. Verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man had done nothing amiss. Listen to me. This man had done nothing amiss. I want to ask you, was this malefactor following Jesus from the very beginning? No. 
This man factor saw what was happening. Now explained what was happening and meditated on what was happening and uh, saw the sobriety of this man and saw the humility of this man and saw the innocency of this man and saw the gravity in the mind of this man and saw that this man was being killed for nothing. Something occurred to him. Some eye of understanding became his lord. Some insight became his lord as he considered what he was seeing. And then as a result, he shied at the other person who was simply bold and said, stop it, shut up your mouth. We are being killed for our evil. But this man did not do anything amiss and should not be killed like a criminal. And then he said further, and he said unto Jesus, verse 42, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Oh, praise God. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Who told him that Jesus was Lord? It was an instantaneous experience of having eyes of understanding open. So you can see what we are talking about. And... Uh, Immediately, this is the response of the master. Verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Let me branch a little and tell you something that uh, you may be interested in. There are some religious people that read this verse upside down in order to confirm or establish that there is no life after death. And you know what they say? The way they read it is, and Jesus said unto him, Verily, very I say unto thee today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise in the future. That's how they read it. Verily, verily, I say unto thee today. I will not mention those people. You should know them. But here we have the Lord Jesus Christ talking about that that same day, that day too we are going to paradise, paradise below where Abraham was. And of course you know that by the Spirit of God, Apostle Peter said that when he gave up the ghost, the Spirit of God that was in him conducted his spirit to the lower parts of the earth in order to preach to the people that are there and to announce to them that salvation had been, had been concluded and that their time to leave paradise below had come. That was what he went to announce to Abraham. And that individual was with him as they descended into the lower parts of the earth in the bosom of Abraham. Eyes of understanding being opened. And now it will take those whose eyes of understanding are enlightened to benefit, to tap of these resources. Definitely, if somebody's eye is not opened, it cannot take advantage of what is available. If you do not know about the existence of a philanthropist, though he is living next door to you, if you have no awareness, if you are told and you wouldn't believe, if you elect to close your eye onto that fact, you will not be able to benefit. God is not a man. He does not renege on the promises. Listen to me, as far as God is concerned, when he enters a contract, that contract is as good as anything. You keep your term of the contract, you do your lot, and he does his lot. That is the nature of God. He is a person that respects contract. And so when God has called a man and showed him what he wants to do. 
There is no way God will allow that man to be taken out by Satan because God is greater than Satan. Now, who is there among you? The child of accountability, age, the girl or the boy, the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, the master and the servant, the teacher, the student and the worker, the bachelor and the spinster, the businessman and the businesswoman, the old and the young, the rich and the poor among us, the sick and the healthy, the privileged and the less privileged, the naturally endowed and spiritually endowed, the Christian worker and the minister, the sinner and the backslidden, the ones that are courting to marry, the widow and the widower, the wise kind, black kind, or the colored. All of us, wherever you are, I want you to know that God has decided to open the eyes of understanding of each and every person. The package has been packaged. The deed is done. The seal is put. The stamp is made. And the agreement has been stamped. And it has been delivered. It has been delivered. Gracious things. Sicknesses that are incurable. God has designed that they all will be cured. You are going to see it with your eyes. Am I talking to somebody? If I'm talking to somebody, let me hear them say amen wherever they are. Amen. Now, I want to tell you that so long as the Lord has packaged these things and then and has designed that our eyes of understanding should be opened to these things, so long should we desire to have these things become our lot. And it is your responsibility, it is your prerogative to henceforth say all the things that God has packaged, all the incredible blessings. There are some division of things by the Lord that should belong to people. Remember that there are those that are pastors, there are those that are evangelists, there are those that are teachers, and then there are those that have one office or the other. Now, these are the offices that the Lord has created. Now, but the Lord has now created packages for every person, all of us, little children, pregnant women, unmarried people, people that are expecting to marry, all of us must realize that there is some great package or packages for you. And you must declare it. You must say, mine must belong to me. How come that somebody that was about to get into hell, somebody that end a destiny, listen to me, so a person we read about, end a destiny by evil. Are you listening to me? The person we read about, end a destiny by his evil. But in a twinkling of an eye, now he treated that destiny that he end by his evil with a destiny that he did not pay for. With a destiny that he did not work for. His destiny was hell, and by his evil. But now in, in the moment of time, because of having eyes of understanding, he said things that changed his destiny, and his destiny became paradise. Oh, what an information. What an experience. What a desire that you must have, that your eyes of understanding may be opened, that you may know what you should know about God, that you may know what you should know about the Bible. The Bible is being put 
to question, and very many people are saying nasty things, that you may know and see the truth of God in the right perspective, the way Jesus Christ sees the truth of God, the way the angels see the truth of God, the way the saints that are in heaven see the truth of God, the way genuine children of God see the truth of God's world. That is what must happen. Eyes of understanding being opened. Some special insight. Some definite awareness being our Lord. And in this meeting, that is what the Lord has decided to do. Do not miss out on it. If you miss out on it, you will have yourself to blame. But I pray that the much that you have heard will be an eye-opener, will be an instrument of gingering you, will be an instrument of influencing you into desiring what you should desire. I was born again at the hand of somebody that was preaching by the roadside on the street. But before then, listen to me, I had thought and sought to be born again, to become a child of God at age nine. And then but the Lord saw that desire and then fulfilled it at age 30 to 31. Is somebody listening to me? And now when I became born again, and my eyes opened, and my sins were forgiven, and I felt the lightness of those whose sins were forgiven. The guilt was taken away. The joy of salvation was there. This is what Christ Jesus called being born again. And I was thinking, God is generous. God is good. God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. How come that it was me alone that he would save in the midst of these multitudes? I didn't see how that was possible. And as I was saying it, my eyes of understanding were opening as to God's faithfulness, as to God's nature, as to God's love, as to God's desire to save all mankind. And before you know it, the thing was established. The thing filled me up. The thing was the thought of the morning and the, the waking thought and the sleeping thought. I woke up every day. As I was on the road, as I was going to walk, I was thinking about it and it consumed me. My eyes of understanding have been opened as to the nature of God, as to the desire that he would have all men to be saved. And as a result of that eye of understanding being opened, the Lord began to speak to me. The Lord did not speak to me in the beginning. It was when I had thought and thought and thought and considered, and my eyes were opened. Now, what are you going to do this day? Are you going to wait and remain in your calamity? Are you going to wait and remain in your misery despite what has been packaged? God forbids. Am I talking to people that are alive or dead? In this present day, the people's hearts are very daft. Shouldn't somebody desire? Shouldn't somebody jump? Shouldn't somebody say, I need this thing badly. This is the need of my life. Oh, what a day. What a message. What a word. I am going to have it. And as you are saying that, assuredly, the experience will be a lot. At this point in time, I would want all of you to rise up wherever you are and spread your hands unto heaven, toward heaven and toward God, and begin to call upon the name of the Lord on this matter, saying, I can see what happened unto the male pactor, how he changed his destiny in a twinkling of an eye, because his eyes of understanding were opened. I can see how that Mordecai, because his eyes of understanding were opened, he had insight as to God's ability. Now he said unto the queen, if you will keep quiet, if you will say there is the Persian laws that are unchangeable and you will not go to the king to demand 
what you should demand. Then I assure you, deliverance and enlargement will come to the Jews from another quarter. How could somebody say that who did not have his eyes of understanding open? How could Abraham say, God made me rich, not Abimelech, not, not the other king? How could Elisha say to Elijah while he was going, my father, my father, how could he call him the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof? His eyes of understanding were open. Peter knew about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he was the Messiah, the son of the living God. That thing that condemned the Jews because they would not see anything. But this person saw it. Do you know that your sight makes the difference? Makes you a different person from another person. Makes you to be a different person. Two people are in trouble. Two people are suffering diabetes. And one is killed by diabetes and the other one is not killed. Two people are into the same danger. They are traveling in a vehicle. And a vehicle some assaulted. And one came out on hot. And the other person died. The thing that can bring it about is eyes of understanding being opened. Listen to this testimony. I was traveling a number of years ago. And the driver was speeding. And the speed was about 160 kilometers an hour. And the driver did not mind bends. And he was overtaking vehicles at bends. And was speeding and speeding. And I told him to stop and to slow down. But he wouldn't listen. Then I told him something. Go on speeding. You can go to 180 kilometers an hour. If this vehicle tumbles and somersaults seven times and ten times. And then bounces backward into the river. I will come out on hot. Go on and speed. That was because my eyes of understanding were opened as to who I was serving. And as to what the Bible said. How could I say to somebody, an occultic young man, that said he was radiating from Mars, or radiating from Jupiter, on the street of uh, Enugu, in 1978, and who said unto me, I will show you who I am. And I said to him, I don't care to know who you are. I don't care to know where you are radiating from. You could be radiating from the moon. You could be radiating from the sun. You could be radiating from Jupiter through occultism. That does not matter to me. All such people that use occultism, that are into occultism. All such people that are, are into necromancy. All such people that are into suicide. They are all abomination unto the Lord. And they will find themselves in the lake of fire at the end of the day. The young man became infuriated and then went into the house and picked pen and paper and came and said, what is your name? I want to show you that somebody passed somebody. And then I said, I cannot hesitate in telling you my name. I will tell you my name and I tell you where I live because of eyes of understanding of somebody being open. What are you going to do now? Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord on this matter. Get him prepared for the December retreat of the watchman for 2020. Let every person open his mouth and pray unto the Lord. Till at the end of the day, we leave people who have gotten insight, great insight. People who are saying, I know that my Redeemer liveth. People who are saying, I am going to heaven. People who are saying, the place where I am, though filled with sin, will not consume me. I know heaven is in existence. I know there is life after death. I know Jesus Christ is coming. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying. It doesn't matter what occultists are saying. It doesn't matter what people are saying. It doesn't matter what they are posting in the internet. And somebody will say, some youth will say, because I know the Lord. Because I know him. Because I know him. I'm not going to make the mistakes of the people that don't know him. I'm not going to view the things that other people are viewing. And the other people that have gotten their eyes of understanding among the women will say, I will not wear anything that these agents of Satan are wearing. These candidates of faith, these children of Belial, because their fashion will surely lead them to the fire of hell. This is your day. 
Pray to the Lord. I hope I am speaking to people that are alive. And if there is anybody that is dead, you have to be alive. This is not the time of after a meeting, people will remain as they have been. The times are over and out. This is the day of recreation. This is the day of reformatting. This is the day of refurbishing. This is the day of uh, restoration by the Lord. I have already said in my prayer, he that uh, created has the power to recreate. He that formed man of the dust of the ground can reformat, can reform, and can reform the organs. Listen to me. Some of the people have their organs already dilapidating. But uh, I want to tell you that uh, the God of heaven that formed the organ originally has a spare organ. He can change uh, your heart. He can change your kidney. The tissues and the muscles of your kidney will be reinvigorated. This is what God can do. But he does it with people who know him. He does it with people whose eyes of understanding have been opened. It is your day. And take advantage of this day. And the Lord will bless you. Pray unto God. The God of heaven. Pray unto God. At the end of the day, there is going to be a proof that the things that I have said, they are of God. Remember that Gideon asked for sign. And God gave him the sign. And then God even told Ahab to ask for sign. And Ahab was playing religion. And he said, I'm not going to disturb you. I'm not going to ask for sign. And said, okay, I will give you my own sign. A virgin shall be with child. Now I am going to pray. And the Lord will prove to somebody. Somebody somewhere. Some people for that matter. That the Lord has sent me. Now I pray. Precious Father. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for your word. Precious master. And that is what I have said to the people. And I have said it by thy spirit. Remember the prayer I made, Lord, in the beginning. Even in the house. And I said, I do not know how to preach or to pray as I ought. But the spirit of God maketh intercession and preacher for me. With groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. And he answereth our prayers because the Spirit maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, Father, in all the locations where they have heard the voice of the man of God, precious Father, all those people that are being threatened to die in the name of Jesus Christ, now they will see evidence Things will happen in their lives. Precious Father, that they may know that God is saying what he means. There shall be evidences. Somebody will have a testimony. Something happened unto me when the man was speaking. Thank you, my Father, my God. There is going to be pretest of the things that are going to happen even this December. Thank you very, very much. Eternal Father in glory. The eternal Father in glory, the Father of our Lord Jesus, these words are your words. These ideas are your ideas. This opinion is your opinion, not mine. Therefore, my Father and my God prove to the people that what I have said is the truth. Trouble has been taken in the preparation. Labor has been put Sacrifice has been put. Therefore, make a proof that they may know. Thank you for answer to prayers because it has already taken place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I have prayed. Amen. And let me hear everyone everywhere say, Amen. Amen.